Well, hey folks, Research here. I bet you didn't expect to hear from me again so soon, but, eh, well, it's been kind of a slow week, so let's go ahead and knock out another couple of videos, how about? Uh, so here we are again. Uh, once again, you can see I've already played the game. We've got plenty of missions to choose from here. Uh, this time, level two, Dr. Gatling's secret weapon. Uh, it's already a little bit of a historical push to make a first-person shooter game using period guns. Uh, and of course, if you're going to have a Civil War game, you've got to have a Gatling gun in here somewhere. No weapon was more feared during the war than a devious gun created by Dr. Gatling. Named after its northern inventor, the Gatling gun was devised to be so deadly that it would quickly put an end to the great conflict. The weapon was hand-cranked with six barrels revolving around a central shaft. Gatling devised the barrels to partially cool the weapon during firing, and more importantly, to kill as many soldiers as possible, as the gun was capable of firing 600 rounds per minute. On May 16, 1864, at Cold Harbor in central Virginia, Confederate spies discovered that Union General Winfield Scott had received a dozen Gatling guns. Well aware of the destructive power of the Gatling gun, Confederate soldiers devised a daring plan to capture and destroy the weapons. Man, we have reports the enemy has some sort of new weapon. And one of these guns was used in the attack yesterday and was damaged. Now our intelligence tells us it was moved to a farm nearby for quick repair. You need to capture that weapon and bring it to us. Otherwise, we're gonna be badly outgunned. Be on the alert. Enemy troops are crawling all over this area. Good luck, soldier. I thought that was a cute little introductory video there showing the Gatling gun in action there. Uh, as a general rule, you can always tell if a photo is authentic from the Civil War period uh, by whether or not it shows action. If it shows any kind of action at all, guns firing, smoke blowing through the air, explosions, then it is not authentic. The, the photographic technology of the time was the daguerreotype, the, uh, the tin type uh, used by Matthew Brady and other such people. Hmm. This is not very good level design. Uh, anyway, you couldn't capture action with those early cameras. The very few examples of action uh, were mostly accidental. Here we go. Even in the Civil War, you had your exploding fire barrels. Isn't that nice? So you see, I'm using the uh, using the Henry rifle this time. It's a pretty fun gun. Now, if you don't have points to invest into your character to get increased damage, then you've got to shoot every guy at least twice. Uh, but since I have uh, double damage right now uh, after spending my points, uh, the Henry rifle is actually pretty useful. So you saw the reloading animation there. Uh, that's, uh, this is a, a weapon that does not use a, uh, a magazine. You undo a little cap there on the barrel, uh, under, on the tube underneath the barrel, and, uh, and you, fire, uh, you, you feed all the bullets down the tube, uh, and it's, uh, it's held in place with a spring. And, uh, and later versions of the rifle improved on that quite a bit. Unfortunately, it's open. If you ever see the underside of a Henry rifle, you see that that entire magazine is, is open. Uh, and it was very easy to get mud and dirt and all sorts of debris in there, which, of course, is not a good thing when you're fighting in the dirt and the mud. More of those Colt rifles. Again, pretty good graphics for this period. Nice water. Decent physics. Here's our guy running around. Aha. It's hard to see through the foliage in this game, so it's nice to see where he's pointing. Here we go. Got him. Sometimes 
So, again, I'm holding the Henry rifle. The Henry was a repeating rifle, a lever-action breech loader using a tubular magazine. Back in the Civil War, it was famously used at the Battle of Little Bighorn, which, of course, is where uh, Custer met his end. Uh, and interestingly enough, it was used by the Native American forces. Uh, it was the Henry rifle that was used to pummel Custer into submission. And uh, and so it played a pretty big role there. Look at this. We've got all these silly, silly things in the uh, in the level here, trying to force us to go to a, go a certain direction. There's an explosion. Here comes some physics. Again, there's that beautiful 2008 Havoc physics engine. Pretty good. So, the Henry rifle uh, eventually became the uh, the Winchester rifle, the classic Wild West rifle. They spawn a lot of guys right here. So, Henry Rifle, designed by Benjamin, Hi Benjamin Tyler Henry, 1860. Uh, produced through 1866, through, so all the way through the end of the war. Hoorah! Hoorah! Keep your head low! Scare country boy! Huh. Hoorah! Yes, there is a melee attack in this game. It's terrible. Uh, I get myself killed every time I try to play this game because I think it's Call of Duty and I try to run up and melee somebody and it just doesn't work. Anyway, Henry Rifle. They were not nearly as common as this game would make you believe. Uh, they were quite uncommon. They were very expensive. Uh, but look at this. I have the pepper box revolver now. Uh, so let's talk about this ridiculous thing. You know, it's appropriate that they put the pepper box in this level with the Gatling gun because it's the same kind of thing. It's a volley gun style gun rather than having a pistol with multiple chambers, uh, each chamber holding a bullet. The pepper box revolver simply has multiple barrels and everyone has a bullet. Boy, this gets noisy. Mark Twain. Uh, was uh, was fond of the pepper box revolver, uh, sort of. He said that the safest place to stand was right in front of it. The, uh, the pepper box revolver was not a particularly accurate gun. Goodness gracious. But it is certainly an interesting looking weapon, isn't it? You can see what they were going for, but, uh, but later on, of course, they just moved on to a, uh, a very different design. So here on the ground, there's a Sharps field rifle. Unfortunately, it's only got two rounds. The Sharps was just a beautiful firearm of its day. It was a breech loader, but not a repeater. It could only hold one bullet at a time, but even that was, uh, was a big deal. And I'm empty, so back to the Henry rifle. This game prides itself on its urban combat, so I try to do these appropriately. It's kind of easy to, to cheese the whole thing, but, uh, but this, this is fun. You can lean around the corners, you can fire quickly. You, you, uh, if you get hit, you just let your, uh, let your health regenerate. But remember, this mission is all about capturing the Gatling gun. Uh, so once you get close to it, it starts uh, spawning enemies nearby, so you got to get in there quick. So here we go. And of course, if you're going to give somebody a Gatling gun, you got to let them shoot it. Never mind that the Gatling gun is a hand-cranked weapon, that it requires a crew uh, and can only hold around 30 rounds in its vertical magazine. No, oh, we'll just shoot all day long because it's a it's a video game and it's a machine gun. Anyway, this was a uh, this was a spring-loaded, hand-cranked weapon. It was a forerunner of the modern machine gun. It was invented by Richard Gatling. And look at that! Anybody know who that is? He looks a lot different in the actual war. Uh, that was Lieutenant General James Longstreet, uh, principal subordinate to General Robert E. Lee. Uh, Lee called him his old war horse. Uh, he, he fought in some pretty critical battles, uh, particularly Second Manassas, Fredericksburg, and Antietam. Uh, he was wounded a number of times, but uh, 
Oh well, you know, he managed to keep on going. He survived the war. He enjoyed a very successful post-war career working for the U.S. government. He was a, a diplomat, a civil servant, an administrator. Uh, however, his conversion to the Republican Party and his cooperation with Ulysses S. Grant after the war, you know, once Grant became president, uh, as well as numerous critical comments he wrote in his memoirs about General Robert E. Lee, uh, made him something of an enemy to many of his former Confederate colleagues. Uh, amazingly enough, he actually ended up leading an African-American militia against the anti-reconstructionist White League at the Battle of uh, Liberty Place in 1874. Uh, authors of the white supremacist Lost Cause movement really focus on General Longstreet's actions at Gettysburg as the primary reason the Confederacy lost Gettysburg uh, and the Lost Cause looks at Gettysburg as the reason that the South lost the war. So, in a way, they believe that General James Longstreet here is personally responsible for the Confederacy losing the war. Okay, here we go. We've gotten our final objective. You gotta get that last guy before this gate opens up. As you can see, I have no grenades left. I have a Sharps field rifle. And look at that. The, riot, the Sharps field rifle has a bayonet, so it has a bonus to melee. So let's give that a try. There's one guy down. There's another guy down. All right, let's try this out. Let's get him. Great. Z melee is really, really not that effective in this game. That's okay. We just had a checkpoint. We'll just jump right back. Cold Harbor, Virginia. Good God, that's loud. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, let's just do this proper here. I've only got 22 rounds for the sharks, but that's enough. There's an ammo box nearby. What a silly gun the pepper box is. Look at this thing. Thank goodness for that indicator, or I would have no idea where these guys are. So the Sharps rifle, large bore single shot rifle, designed by Christian Sharp, 1848, uh, ended production in 1881, so went all the way through the war. Uh, made a regular rifle version of it, made a carbine version of it. Uh, they were renowned for their accuracy. Very, very good long-range rifle. Uh, in fact, after the war, by the 1870s or so, it was available in, uh, in quite a few calibers, and nations all over the world uh, had, uh, had picked it up. And it was one of the most successful designs to transition over to metallic cartridge use. Now you can see my guy here is loading bullets, loading cartridges into this weapon, though that didn't actually happen until quite a few years later on. And this was one of the best rifles to do that. Uh, it's a very iconic Old West type rifle. You see these at, uh, at reenactments and in movies uh, all the time. It's just a, just a very good looking rifle. You can see from the back there that the breech is a massive piece of metal. Uh, one of the reasons for the durability of this rifle, but also one of the reasons for the very, very high weight of it. Uh, over 120,000 of them were built. Uh, it's about a, about a nine and a half to 10 pound rifle. So same as that, um, as the sniper rifle from the last game. Uh, well, pretty darn good piece of gear. So this is great. Got to run across the bridge. They're going to push the uh, push the thing down. Uh, there we go. Conestoga explodes. Oof. That was close. That kind of reminds me of that scene from Children of Men where they push the burning car down at the at the guys. That was a, that was a good movie. So as you can see, I do not have a scope. It's going to be difficult to shoot these guys. We've got lots of volumetric smoke and fog and all that stuff. Actually, this is probably not volumetric, is it? I'm not uh, I'm not a game designer. So we've got more bad guys here. Throw some grenades. <laughs> shoot some fellas here. Why not? 
Anyway, when you see a rifle with that great big piece of metal there in the back on the breech, that's called a falling block rifle. Okay, so we got another Gatling to deal with here. Sneak our way in. Now, when you look at this, you can see there's a crew. There's, there are multiple people. Uh oh. Oh, jeez. No, 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 no. Okay, so there are three guys on that rifle, or, or I'm sorry, on that gun, on that Gatling gun, uh, and that's about right. Uh, you know, it's more like a piece of artillery than anything. One guy can't just stand there and crank the crank and expect to hit anything. So here we go. Whether you prefer to use the iron sights or not, you can see that the uh, crosshairs lights up red whenever you're on an enemy, so that's very, very helpful. And there is no weapon sway, so you don't have to worry about, uh, about drifting off target. There we go. Big old bullet coming out of the, uh, the sharps here. Uh, in this game, very, very high damage. This was a 52 caliber uh, with 50 grains. Pretty big. All right, here we go. Gave us a Gatling again. Don't know why. No enemies here. The bonus objective for this was to pick up boxes of ammunition, but I can't be bothered. All right, let's get these guys. Oof. Leaning mechanic. Get him. And that other guy, he looks distracted to me. I don't think he's paying attention. Let's stick him. There we go. There's a little, little battle happening here. Oh, you noticed me. Get him. <laughs> uh, uh, see if you can get close enough. The, uh, the melee actually does work, but uh, the game is clearly not designed for that. So here we are, Confederate camp. Got my pepper box back. Not really sure what's going on here. These guys didn't seem to mind that there was a firefight happening right at their order. What do you have for me, soldier? All right, let's take you to the general. You have something for me? Oh, yeah. The new weapon? I already heard about it. Damn killing machine. Yeah, General Lee's really gonna appreciate this new addition to our arsenal. And I have the feeling that we're really gonna need it. Oh, never mind, soldier. Go get some rest. You deserve it. Dismiss. Now, I've noticed as I play through these levels that, uh, that certain, uh, certain bits of dialogue do get cut off. I don't know if that was the case in the original version of the game or if it's just something that hasn't poured it over very well, but uh, it's, uh, it's too bad. Anyway, there it is. 82 killed. Uh, accuracy, not very good. Do bonus objectives. I've already done the bonus objective. That's how I got the, uh, the points, so I'm not going to worry too, too much about it. And then the next level is the gray ghost over here. And that's about it for level two. So tune in next time. We're going to go and do a little bit of behind enemy lines action. See you next time.